In Buddhism, if you say what Buddha taught us 2,500 years ago, there are uh, many answers. Buddha taught us the law of cause and effect. How to know uh, uh, positive karmas or negative karmas. And also Buddha taught us the concept of uh, impermanence. Everything is changing constantly. Nothing is permanent. And also, Buddha taught us interdependency arising. Interdependent arising. That means everything is conditional. All phenomena actually based on different conditions in order to form, to ex exist in this world. So finally, Buddha taught us another very fundamental, very profound idea. The word is sayata, the empty nature of things. This is the most difficult part for every one of us. That means, based on this teaching, there's no real self exist. It's very hard, very difficult for us to understand yeah, this teaching. And because this teaching is very difficult, so there is a demonstrator try to guide us. How to liberate us from, uh, uh, from names, from phenomena that we see all the time, from certain kind of uh, uh, attitude that we build up right after we were born in this world. So how can we liberate us unless we have the ability to detach from all kinds of attachments? We won't be really free at all. But today I want to mention this concept. Even Buddha taught us impermanence. Buddha taught us empty nature or sanyata. But Buddha never deny, Buddha never ask us to deny the concept of uh, 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 effects, the concept of effects. <coughs> effects means something is happening right here. Today, we are gathering in Guanyin Hall. So this gathering is going to produce some kind of for the temple, for every one of us. But when we see effects, at the same time, we wanted to relate these effects with the original teaching of impermanence and the empty nature of everything. No real self. So, we wanted to connect these effects with the original teaching at the same time. But never uh, 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 train us, just simply understand impermanence, simply understand sanyata. This empty nature exists in everything. Then we don't actually understand effects around us. That is wrong. So as a Buddhist, we still wanted to know what is the name of this, what is the name of that, what kind of a condition we have and in order to produce certain kind of effects that we want. So it's still important. Today if I say, let me have a glass of water. So when I say water, every one of you, you are not going to bring me a glass of wine, is it right? So the name is still important. We don't say it's useless. There are still some effects by using the name correctly. Yeah. <clears throat> Today, when I talk to you, I wanted to remind me, let me be clear with my thoughts. Let me be kind on my words. I don't want to use harsh words to you because I want to be friendly with you, be kind with you. Let's have a good friendship. I don't want to do anything to harm you. 
So it's still important for me to remind myself on this kind of a thinking. Of course, sometimes we have to skip names, phenomena, in certain way. Um, many years ago, I met a college student. Mm. He came back from Hong Kong. And he told me a very, very interesting story during the flight. <coughs> there was a lady, uh, originally from Hong Kong. She's in her 70s or 80s. And uh, 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 when the flight attendant, attendant asked her, what would you like to drink? What would you like to drink? The lady thought for a few seconds. Then she said, uh, I want cow juice. I want to have cow juice. The friend <coughs> has a for white cow juice. <laughs> then she uh, put some milk into the glass. Is this what you want? Cow juice? <laughs> she said, yes. This is what I want. So sometimes, uh, if we are wise enough, from time to time, we do we do have to learn how to liberate us, detach from names, and in order to get to know the facts. So from this story, I hope that we can remember something from this story. We are always use names, use concepts in daily. If we strongly attach to those names, then we might produce another uh, 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 burden in our life. We cannot be free. For example, today, when you come to the temple, <coughs> uh, probably most of you uh, use Balea Bulubat to get here. If you come from uh, east, uh, west, uh, north, most of us will use Bale Buluba to get here. First time comer, if you are very strange here, you don't know the street, you actually have to check on computers, Google yourself, and see how to get to uh, Jay Buddha Temple. You have to find Gary Ashford. Bele or 59 or Bele 8 to guide yourself to get here. It's important for you to check out those informations. How about Justin or Judy to come here? You know, all the time, almost every week. Do you still have to look at on those signs all the time, every time when you come to J Buddha Temple? when you know the place, actually you skip, skip, uh, skip those street signs. Is it true? I do the same. When I come to the temple, you know, come from all corners, I don't have to look on those signs anymore because I know the place. So today, actually, from this chapter, Buddha taught us that uh, names and effects Sometimes we have to combine them together in order to have a right understanding. But when you go further, further, and higher, higher, we have to liberate us from attachment of names, titles, and yeah, signs. So that's why we're going to study this part of teaching today. This is uh, chapter 9 of Diamond Sutra. Basically, Dhamma Sutra is the highest teaching of the Buddha. And uh, later I'm going to uh, express a little more about levels that we have to know in order to reach this level. Mm. Um, very deep, would you please read uh, this chapter class? Do you have copies? <coughs> Chapter 9, 
there is no real uh, person we can call variable honey. There is no real title exists by itself. We can uh, give to this person, he is the vice president of Texas Buddhist Association. How about let me ask you this? Without venerable Jinghai, without venerable Jinghai exists in the tem in the temple. Without his title, he is the president of Texas Buddhist Association. How can I how can I exist as vice president of Texas Buddhist Association? It's conditional because of venerable Jinghai's existence. So I'm here. His name is Jin Hai. My name is Han Yi. He's the president. I'm the vice president. Is it right? Even Verbal Jin Hai and I come to Houston, we sit here. Without you, without you all coming to the temple, without programs, without the building of the temple, how can I, you know, say this is Texas Buddhist Association? This is a Jade Buddha temple, a temple of the association. So can you see? We use names, titles all the time, but we should not attach to those kind of names and titles because it depends on all kinds of conditions in order to exist. <coughs> if we understand everything is conditional, that means everything is changing. Everything is impermanent. Because everything is impermanent, that means if we wanted to find a true self from anything, it's impossible. That's why we say selflessness. That's why we say this is a sanyata. The, end, the nature of everything is empty. It's very you know, difficult to describe the meaning of a sanyata. In English, many people translate sanyata by using empty. But empty might give a wrong impression. This is empty. Oh, this is not empty. My right hand is empty. My left hand is not empty. But it's not that empty. Sanyata means there's no real nature in it. There's no permanent inheritance in this title. <coughs> <coughs> because um, Justin uh, just mentioned that uh, we have friends just coming to the temple. Uh, uh, allow me to uh, uh, use some minutes uh, to introduce Buddhism in this way. Buddhism just uh, not teach us concepts, ideas. Actually, it's very important for us to know that in Buddhism, the reason for us to learn Dharma because we wanted to actually improve ourselves. When we say we want to improve ourselves without practices, it's impossible. So that's why we uh, invite people to meditate. Meditation will help you to uh, uh, be focused and also to understand about self better. And also clear minds and uh, uh, a lot of uh, teachings from the Sutra will guide us how to think, how to talk to others, how to do things on the right path. So if you ask me, very behind me, could you tell me how Buddha taught us the way to improve ourselves? My answer is very simple. There are two levels to this <coughs> goal. First, every one of us, we have to be able to use wholesome deeds or right understanding right understanding to eradicate negative uh, 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 <coughs>
doing connective counts. So this is the first level. I don't want you to jump yourself directly into all uh, 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 completely de uh, detachment. <coughs> so today I wanted to mention this to you. In Buddhism, we teach uh, everyone how to learn uh, 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 detached from attachments. But before we reach this level, actually, Buddha told us, let's learn how to correctly understand what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, what is wholesome, what is and so in this level, Buddha always remind us, if you feel you have uh, uh, a lot of anger inside you, then Buddha said, uh, you have to be mindful, always remember to cultivate your kindness, your patience. Remember patience, remember kindness, remember compassion. It's very important for us. If a person who is very stingy, very selfish, then Buddha said, it's important for you, for this person, to remember sharing, giving. So actually, the Art Sutras teaches us in this way, how to grab, how to you know, learn some uh, good practices. It's very useful in our daily life. You just pick something you need. So this is the first level. Using right practices to eradicate wrongdoing. This is the first level. And the second level is, after we cultivate a lot of our good deeds, and we build a lot of uh, good comments in our life, then we have to use equanimity. The stage of equanimity, the mental stage of equanimity. No discrimination on the practice. That means when I do good deeds, I don't want to separate myself uh, uh, from others. I'm not going to continue, continue to, to develop this kind of uh, thinking. I am Reverend Hang Yi, who's the one helping you. You are the receiver. And uh, I don't want to use these concepts to practice my sharing, my giving practice. So we elevate ourselves. I don't want to say that uh, you are my friend, so I'm going to help you. You are my enemy, so I'm not going to help you. Sometimes we even understand we wanted to practice uh, uh, sharing, giving, be generous, but somehow we still separate people, you know, in the group. This is my good friend. Oh, I dislike this person, so I'm not going to uh, pay attention to him. So by practice equanimity, we'll elevate uh, our practice. And uh, this is the first level. And uh, in this level, there are two stages. The first one is using positive concepts, practices, to eradicate wrongdoings, wrong concepts. Then use equanimity to elevate us. And do uh, whatever we should do equally among people, all right? So after we under understand this teaching of Buddha, <clears throat> then we move ourselves to the path uh, to liberation. So today in this chapter, if you carefully read those uh, uh, contents, you are going to discover there are four stages of uh, 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 Buddhist uh, uh, practice. Uh, there are names for those stages. 
but sometimes in Buddhism we simplify uh, uh, the way to introduce those four stages. We just simply call the first uh, stage the first flute, the first flute, the second flute, the third flute, the fourth flute. There are four stages. We simply by using numbers one, two, three, four to name these stages. <coughs> Actually, in this sutra, uh, Venerable Chinahan translate those uh, uh, four stages into uh, English words. The first fruit we can call this stream antonym. Stream antonym. And uh, the second fruit is uh, uh, once returned. Returner. Once returner. The, the third fruit is no return. The fourth fruit is arahant. So you can uh, do your best. Uh, simply remember there are four fruits we wanted to achieve. And uh, uh, also uh, you can remember the meaning of the stage. But today, mm, I'm going to introduce that uh, actually in Chinese translation, uh, there are uh, Sanskrit to describe these four stages. The first fruit in Sanskrit is that Sarotapana. This is the first stage. The second stage they call this Skadagami. Uh, uh, skada it's uh, not easy to pronounce. Skadagami. The third stage is uh, Agami. Agami, the third stage. Finally, the fourth stage is Arohat. I think everyone, most of us, probably were very uh, 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 used to, to uh, know the name of Arohat. Arohat food is very common. You know, for people to say this, because this is the perfect enlightened stage. This is the last stage of uh, practitioners. And today, <coughs> after I introduce the names of those four stages, I wanted to uh, invite you to uh, uh, this question. Why we divide this practice, the way to uh, enlightenment, into four stages. Do you want to know the reason for that? Why we separate students who are uh, willing to go to uh, our manhood, the stage of enlightenment, by going through different classes. There are at least three classes before they achieve Enlightenment. And uh, uh, I wanted to introduce the reason for that. Actually, <coughs> we will say when a practitioner who is able to reach the first fruit, the first stage, this stage <coughs> in Sanskrit we call we call it Sarotabana. When a, a person, a practitioner, who practice Buddha Dharma, reaching this stage, that means this practitioner already built up uh, a lot of uh, good deeds from previous uh, practice. In this stage, the first fruit practitioner actually he's, has right understanding of everything. He, he builds up right understanding already. There's no more illusions. No illusions in this stage. No wrong practices in this stage. That means when this person decided to do something, to practice something, is always on the right path. Sometimes, as a Buddhist, uh, we might have a motivation to do something good, but we may not be able to understand 
everything we do, something are not right. We're doing something, we feel this is a, a practice, but we don't know this is a wrong practice. And for, for example, some people, they fast themselves. They don't eat this, they don't eat that. But according to Buddha's teaching, you fast yourself, you make yourself uh, uh, always you know, uh, uh, hungry. You suffer uh, with your physical uh, 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 what do you call the changes. Actually, it's not beneficial at all sometimes. So we have to understand what is wrong, what is right. This practitioners already built up right understanding. So there's no more wrong practices. And also there's no doubts on four noble truths. There are three qualities for this fruit. And after this stage, it doesn't mean after we have a right understanding, we are always good. Actually, we, if we observe the reality, we are going to dis, uh, discover that even people have a right understanding in their mind. It doesn't mean their behavior, their habits are always correct. We might still have uh, 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 anger inside us. We might still be you know, selfish sometimes. Yeah. We might still have uh, 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 unsatisfactions uh, inside us. Yeah. Like last Wednesday, I went to uh, a wedding ceremony. They told me, Nirvahani, the wedding will take place at 5. So I arranged myself to go to the place before 5. <coughs> we even departed earlier because we, don't know the, the, we did not know the place. We try to make ourselves earlier to be there. But after I arrived the place, nobody was there. And uh, I asked Sister Shita to call someone. What's going on? What's happening? Are we going to have a wedding or not? <laughs> 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 she called someone. They say, no, we're not going to have a wedding start at five. We're going to have a schedule at uh, six. <laughs> Actually, they give me a written uh, notice, a written uh, 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 information that uh, the ceremony will start at five. So at the moment, even myself, I was not satisfied. You know? <laughs> I said, what's going on? Why they, they uh, did not call me again, tell me, it's not five, it's a six. But after a few seconds of thinking, then I changed myself, so improved myself right away by using right understanding. I should not raise my anger. I should cultivate, cultivate my kindness and forgiveness. So I said, uh, let's find a place. Let's have some coffee. <laughs> Let's have some sweets <laughs> to satisfy our stomach. <laughs> so be ready for the wedding. And enjoy the conversation with uh, a volunteer. She's working, uh, you know, she's doing all kinds of volunteer work for many years. I did not have a chance to talk to her. Just met her in the meetings. So the afternoon, I had uh, about one half an hour to talk to her. <laughs> Let's enjoy the conversation. So finally, I was uh, refreshed. I, I still uh, you know, had my uh, loving kindness toward the couple, toward the families. You know? And uh, I still wanted to use my uh, best uh, uh, skill to perform the wedding. So that is a way that for us to know, even we reach the first fruit, the first stage, of our kind of food. It doesn't mean when we have a right understanding, we can purify our wrongdoing right away. It still takes some time. So that's why the second fruit, the third fruit, actually purify ourselves by actually dealing with realities. 
but actually eradicate our anger, hatred, greed, and all wrong behaviors. Please remember, in our daily life, most of the time, I believe as a Buddhist, we always try to think right. But a lot of times, because of our wrong habitual behavior, made us very miserable. That's why we need to have some time in the second stage and in the third stage to purify ourselves uh, you know, uh, little by little until we reach our hood. When we reach our hood, that means we are not just having right understanding. We understand impermanence. We understand sanyata. We understand no real self exists. No mental attachments or names at all. There's no first fruit. There's no second fruit. There's no third fruit. So that's why you can achieve our own hood. <laughs> if you still say, oh, I'm having all those stages. I'm gaining all those kind of titles. You are still collecting all those street signs in your mind. It's a burden, it's right. Every time when you come to Jay Buddha Temple, it's a, uh, it's a burden. Those burdens will make you free. You understand the way, then you automatically detach from those signs. You just come. You don't have to use your energy, your attention on those signs anymore. This is the teaching of this chapter. There's no real uh, street, uh, street antenna exist. There's no real one once return. There's no no return. There's no even our Then we completely liberate. And uh, uh, Justin, <coughs> I remember that uh, you told me you wanted to become a uh, stream intimate in this life, if you hope. <laughs> I would like to uh, ask you that uh, when you think about this kind of uh, uh, idea, I wanted to enter, I wanted to become stream intimate. What is the base you have? You still thinking, I'm adjusting. I wanted to become the first fruit of it. Is it true? Because you still have the idea of I. Because of this I, so you wanted to become stream entrepreneur. If you don't have the idea, the attachment of I, no more stream entrepreneur. <laughs> Is it right? But you still enter the stream. You still have the effects by your practice, from your practice. That's important. You still receiving the effects. You still have the re the results from what you do. You just don't attach to those names and the titles because there's no more I attachment. There's no more self attachment. This is the teaching of Buddha. So we can be free. That is true. Uh, in the past 30 years, if I always attach to my title, uh, Venerable Jim Hai, you are the president of Texas Buddhist Association for more than 30 years. How come you never retired? <laughs> Allow me to become the president. <laughs> if I attach to titles, if I attach to my, my names, if I attach to you know things around here, actually I'm not going to be free at all. Because I have a very little attachment on everything around around me. So I'm still a free monk. Even I do a lot of uh, service in the temple. So be free. How can we be free? <coughs> no attachment <coughs> on how we do. No attachment on how we do, it doesn't mean we don't do all those good deeds. 
we still practice wholesome deeds. You don't want to have wrong behavior. You want to think right, talk right, do right. But no attachment. Without attachment, you are completely free in your mind. With your uh, 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 practice. But at the same time, according to the law of cause and effect, you still receive benefits. You still create, uh, accumulate merits just because you don't attach to it. So, in your mind, I don't have the concept of merits. I don't have the concept of good deeds. I just do it right. <clears throat> and uh, this is the teaching of Buddha. And uh, today, I wanted to start my talk right here. <coughs> I wanted to open the floor for every one of you, see if you have any thoughts to share with us or any um, any question you want to ask. Okay. Before that, Judy. I, I do we that, have any person for yeah, five I think minutes? Let's, uh, let's finish up the question section mm -hmm. before we uh, bring up the house. <coughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe the like the example views, like the you you were invited to this wedding, but because the driver mistake in the process, there's no invitation. It's the the time is six, you know, five o'clock. It's the right time six o'clock. So you wait for one hour. Yeah, but but of course you you you, you were able to find in the time. You know, it's still wisely and then you didn't get mad at people. But but you know like for me I. See lots of lots of times people they don't appreciate other people's time. They they don't want their self time to be wasted, but they like them. and I have like and I just want to know like what kind of karma for a person does not appreciate others time. Like I have a friend, she's a very good person, but for some reason every time we have good lunch, she will tell us say make sure be there it's eleven thirty. And she always, always the last one she was, you know, always waiting for her. And uh, I, I just wonder what, what how karma would they bring to her, you know, like she has that kind of eight, like I have to wait for her every time when you talk to her, you know, make her. She always made me wait for her for a very long time, never return my call, my email one. What how karma would they bring to her? I mean, just, you know, I can I can see lots of people like her, but she's like more obvious one. Uh, thank you for your question, uh, Annie. Uh, first of all, first uh, I wanted to mention that the, the couple uh, did not uh, uh, really made that um, uh, kind of a change uh, on any negative purpose. Actually, they changed the schedule. Somehow, uh, the temple did not receive it. So it was a misunderstanding. And that the way for me to correct this kind of a phenomenon is I wanted to uh, make certain requirements uh, for my assistants. So every time when we weddings or going out, I want them to double check the schedule. So make us you know, clearly understand what is the schedule. Uh, so that, uh, that is the way uh, uh, we don't have to waste our time and our energy on uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, misunderstanding. Secondly, I feel that uh, sometimes people, yes, some people, they don't uh, have the kind of uh, uh, concept how to cherish time, how to be on time, how to meet people on schedule. And actually, I attach to the concept on time. If you invite me to go to your home, at five, I will be there before five. If I know that it's too early, I will sit in the car, you know, wait for five minutes. At five, I will ring the bell. <laughs> 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 because of this, so I build up certain kind of a, a, a attitude. When people don't uh, come to the meeting on time, I may not feel comfortable. So that is another part. I have to eradicate the negative feelings. 
seeing people not on time. I will try the way to correct those behaviors. I will educate people, telling people, let's be on time, let's be on time. We have 10 people here because you are late for 10 minutes. Not everybody is waiting. Then we are wasting a lot of time. So I'm going to educate people, encourage people to be on time. But I still feel that uh, without education, without proper understanding, I don't know what, you know, what it started with. Do you have any concepts? Any? At least that uh, don't make you uh, yourself angry on this. Yes, yeah. but, but I think the thing about the quality of the person, what kind of time are they? But, but, but I, can, I can share this with you. Why I know this? She, she has become busier because of what? For some reason, I don't know. Uh, personalities, uh, habitual behaviors. Uh, uh, I used to not uh, see a person. <laughs> Who always uh, tell you, uh, I will be there in a meeting. I will be there in a meeting. But most of the time, he won't be there for a meeting. <laughs> now I know his uh, personality. Now I know his behavior. Mm -hmm. Then I want to be ready for that. So that's why when I arrange things, then I wanted to know that uh, maybe he won't be here today for the meeting. Maybe he won't take that responsibility. I'm always ready for that kind of uh, phenomenon. Um, okay, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I've been reading a lot of studying this week, the Lotus Sutra, and something stood out that really stood out strong. There's names of the extreme emperor and overturn and what to turn. And in the Lotus Sutra, we talk about the open.
and uh, and she said, uh, you know, it's no big deal. We'll, we'll, we'll be here. And um, actually, even though I was 15 minutes late getting home, we got there five minutes after our appointment. Everything turned out okay, but I think because she was so angry that it it did taint the actual experience itself. Even if you're five minutes late, if you're, if you're really angry, then that hour of time, which should be very joyful and happy, you, you lose some of it. I mean, you could have had a whole hour of happiness because you're, you're there in that time now. I mean, what happened before is gone. I mean, it's, it's not there anymore. So you could have had an hour of happiness, but then you only get 30 minutes, you only get 45 minutes, you know? So it's all kind of perspective. You know? um, but being chronically late, I, I guess I'll apologize for it. <laughs> uh, from your comments, uh, I suddenly remember another concept uh, that I always share with uh, friends. I told friends, I said, uh, if, if we face certain difficulties, problems, don't become a double loser, a double loser. For example, somebody uh, uh, just uh, Break my uh, teacup. Okay, somebody was trying to wash teacup, and uh, she or he uh, breaks my teacups. So I lost a teacup. Because I lost this teacup, then I was very angry. Then I become double loser. <laughs> Is it right? Is it right? You are losing your temper. <laughs> you are losing your kindness. You are losing your patience. Maybe you are going to lose your friendship because of this anger. Maybe not double loser, triple loser. <laughs> uh, so this is uh, what I you know, uh, uh, just learned from you. Then I suddenly remember that uh, uh, let's Remember, don't become a double loser in the end. And, uh, yes? I'd like to comment about that too, because me, I'm a very busy person, and sometimes I stretch my time to a limit. And I do try to make on time, but there are times, days that I don't, and I feel awful. And there are people that do that to me the same way. But I remember the times that when I'm in a hurry, I could almost have an accident that I drove too fast and etc. So when I was at a lunch appointment actually the other day, that my friend was late, but I would say, please take your time, because I we think of the times I was trying to meet other people's demand. That I stretch my time is my fault because I, you know, <laughs> I I do, you know, stretch my time to a limit to a point that sometimes I'm late to certain things, but also I experienced the risk that I took to get to the places I'm supposed to be. But when someone does it to me, I try to remember you know, that there are many reasons behind it, and I'd rather him to be late than never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that, you know, that actually calms me, and, and because I know I anger people that's what being late. <laughs>
has been arranged, but somehow the lady stood here for almost 45 minutes. No youth group members coming to the temple. And she said, what's going on? Then she called Su Su call the president of the youth group. Then the president of the youth group called the person, one officer, find out what's going on. He said, uh, we have our own transportation already. So they just went to Galveston without calling Sue <coughs> or the person again. We don't have to use the van of the temple. So Sue told me about this. And Sue told me that the officer, the young man, noticed that he was doing something uh, causing trouble. So on the phone, he said, uh, are you sorry? Are you sorry? Are you sorry? So tell me about, uh, about this story. I said, that's enough. that's enough. As long as this young man says sorry, that's enough. We don't want to criticize them. Continue to, you know, uh, tell them that they were wrong. And so sometimes, as long as another person have this understanding, that's not stop them. Sometimes we criticize someone because emotion, emotionally, we just feel we wanted to express our anger toward people. It's not necessary. So I told the mother of the young man, I said, you go home, never mention this in front of your son. That's enough. Let's, let us deal with, with him. That's enough. And uh, so there are a lot of things happening to us all the time. How are you going to improve yourself from <laughs> first fruit, no, to the second fruit, the third fruit, in order to achieve our own fruit. Today, I believe all, all of us, we have certain right understanding already, but somehow habitual behavior causing us wrongdoing, wrong talking, wrong attitude. We cannot eliminate those. That's the part. Okay. Any other questions, please? One thing that you said was that um, people shouldn't worry about what kind of merits they're talking to do good. I've had a lot of other people tell me that you, know, you have to do good deeds and you have to collect merit. And I don't really know how to, I mean, I'd like for them to think more along the line of what you said. Because um, some people say, oh, if you, you know, bring donations to a monk, you get more merit than if you were to help a homeless person. Um, I don't really agree with that, but I was just wondering what your take was, that, was on that. And how, how would I help somebody who, who was telling me this? Because I felt like they have a misunderstanding as well. Uh, the practice you mentioned, uh, actually, uh, uh, a lot of people, when they say that, think that, they are still in the very beginning level using wholesome deeds to eradicate unwholesome deeds. So that is the very beginning level. It's also important, but at the same time we discover that uh, when people <coughs> understand we have to be good, but always, always mentioning how to be good, attached to those names, fames, uh, try to uh, let people understand what I have, have accomplished. Increase their egos, their self-centered uh, self personalities. That is another problem. Even I'm doing things are good, but I also, at the same time, continue to grow my ego, my self-centered personality. Then Buddha said, that is not perfect. That is not pure. Even you are doing good things, but it's not pure. So we have to move ourselves from the first level <coughs> to the second level to set us set up right understanding. So right understanding is the foundation to detach from all kinds of names, forms, all kinds of you know, phenomena, in order to liberate us from those attachments. So in this way, we can continue to practice good deeds. 
please understand. If we strongly attach to what we are doing, if I always asking you, why don't you praise me? I have served, you know, the temple for 30 years. Please <laughs> praise me. Tell me I'm good. I'm a good monk. <laughs> if I always ask this kind of uh, praise, I cannot continue to serve the temple very long. I'm going to create jabatis for myself. Is it right? So actually, detach from those attachments, that will create a space freely for us to punish good deeds. We need to, that's why we need to teach people the Dharma in deeper level, higher level. Without teaching them this, yes, people were attached to how to offer incense, offer fruits to the Buddha. They strongly attach to this offering because they don't know that offering Dharma, offering good deeds, that is the best offering in Buddhism. Yeah. And uh, uh, of course, we don't want to discriminate those uh, uh, people at the same time. Yeah. We wanted to still understand why they are having this kind of uh, uh, concepts. The last Yeah, uh, probably the next moment will be negative too. 